Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we'll be talking about the console version of Overwatch, some of the specific challenges console players face and whether it's even comparable to the PC experience. First impressions. Okay, so there was a free weekend for Overwatch on consoles recently. I took the time to download the game and play it to see what the differences were and what I thought about it. The reason for this is that as a channel that offers guides and advice, we had noticed some people leaving comments about certain tactics we had talked about either not working or being wrong, using Genji to counter Torb, Turrets or a Bastion for example. So I wanted to understand what the console player experiences when they play the game and why one thing that works on PC might not work on console. So first let's talk about the elephant in the room, how each platform manages player input. On the screen right now you will notice me in training mode making very quick fast sweeping movements with my mouse, the kind that a skilled player would use to flick to a target very very quickly and hopefully accurately. Most console players I don't think grasp how hard it is to actually physically control the characters with a thumbstick and how it has several disadvantages when compared to a mouse. Now I'm not making a value judgement here, I'm not saying mouse players are better or that console players are worse, keep that in mind as we continue, just that comparing the hardware is in fact important. A mouse or a thumbstick should be viewed as a tool to do a job. In this case the job they're performing requires precision, the more the better. A mouse can make sweeping movements in a fraction of a second. A thumbstick has dead zones, which if you don't know what they are, it's the area where the thumbstick is left in a neutral position, as if you weren't touching it and it offers no input at all. Because of those dead zones, aiming very quickly and precisely, especially a quick turn or a wide flick, is much harder to do. Think of the range of motion a thumbstick can actually do. It's limited by the plastic of the controller and there is a dead zone in the middle of it. For a mouse, that's like having a mouse mat approximately one inch across with a central zone where your mouse just wouldn't track and the crosshair wouldn't move. That sounds impossible and impractical, and it would be, hence why aim assist was invented for console first person shooters. But there's another detail. Console players have to use this imperfect tool for movement as well as aiming, so the challenges they face are even harder. Player's movement and aim makes the gameplay differently. So why is this technical information important? Well let's just use the Genji vs Bastion matchup as an example. On PC this is fairly straightforward, Genji can just use his reflectability and his movement abilities to counter Bastion's static DPS. On PC, top level Genjis have incredible mechanical skill, utilising both movement and aim to run circles around Bastion and kill him easily. On console however, the movement skills are actually a lot harder to perform. Not impossible, there are some very skilled console players, of that I have little doubt, but much harder. Because movement mechanics are harder to perform, the Bastion who has aim assist helping him track the Genji has an easier time of killing him. So when we say on the channel, Bastion is countered by Genji, console players might be left thinking, are these guys mad? Another area that gets more difficult to compare the two is in projectile use. Aim assist is viable for hitscan heroes like McCree, Soldier and Tracer, but I'm unclear on its effectiveness for projectile heroes. The game Play of Hanzo in the background is used because I wanted to test this out, and I must admit, I'm unclear of whether it helped me or not. It's difficult to appraise if I'm being completely honest. Impact on the metagame. Because of this key difference, characters that require higher skill tier movement or aim from the player perform differently on each platform. Many console players have thought Torbjorn overpowered, and let's be frank, he was on console. His turrets made easy work of players who can't physically do advanced movements as easily. The result of this is that the meta has become platform independent. One developing on console, another on PC. Blizzard are now balancing the two platforms separately and have been for a while. So what does this mean? Well firstly it means that we're essentially playing different games. Similar but still different. And secondly, there will probably never be a mixed player base, which is a great shame to me personally but on reflection is probably a good idea. Overwatch Esports. So with the game playing differently on each platform, which one is the dominant form and most likely to remain active and have a healthy competitive scene? Well and this isn't going to be popular, the PC version will most likely become the de facto esport platform. In fact it already is and has been since the game's release. I doubt there will be a viable eSport for console. I could be wrong on that, but the thought of there being two tournaments for the same game at events doesn't strike me as likely. To use another game as an example, I bet many of you didn't even know that CSGO was actually available on console. It's true, it was on the Xbox 360 and PS3, but the huge eSport that it has become was only ever going to be based on PC. The same I think is true for Overwatch, although it must be said, the console version of Overwatch is vastly more viable as a game than console CS was. Overwatch is a console game. One of the things to think about is how much competition Overwatch has on the console platform. One of the misconceptions about Overwatch is that it's a casual experience. It's far from that. Its design ethos has competition right at the very heart of it. Console shooters for the most part are more casual experiences. Games like Destiny and Call of Duty are juggernauts of the industry designed to satisfy a more casual player base. Does Overwatch fit into the console space? Well actually I think it more directly competes with Halo as both are focused on being highly competitive. In that frame I think 
think Overwatch is more viable and I can see some genuine life as a healthy game. The sheer variety of playstyles available means that there's a huge amount of life to the game. So if you're a console player on Overwatch, I think you can look forward to a healthy player base for quite some time. To conclude, I'd just like to say a few things. The first is a bit of bad news, unfortunately. As a channel, we all play the game on PC. So from time to time, our advice may seem like it makes little sense to you in the console context. Think back to Genji vs Bastion. But the principles of team play, what you ideally want to be doing with a specific hero, etc., will all still be relevant. If anything, I just have a huge amount of respect for people who can do the more advanced things on console now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you want us to cover anything specific, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comment section below. Also, please remember to follow the Your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can get all your updates for the channel, when we'll be releasing videos, and when we are likely to stream. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time.